Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Harris, and welcome to Life Questions, a program that answers your questions about life from a biblical perspective. The everyday happenings of life, be they big or small, controversial or complex, present challenging questions that we all want answers to. And you know, we know that to be the case because we have received so many of your questions thought-provoking questions about all aspects of life. Well, we've armed ourselves with a panel of ministers of the gospel to provide us biblical perspective on your questions, and I'd like to introduce them to you at this time. First guest is Pastor Nathan Brenham of the Grace Fellowship Church, followed by Pastor Angie Chung of the Delphus First Assembly of God Church. Then there's Pastor Jonathan Hanover of the Kenton First United Methodist Church, and last, to round up our panel, we have Pastor Chris Ewing of the County Line Church of the Brethren. And you know, um, they are here today to answer your questions that you, our audience, have sent us. And um, we want you to stay tuned, however, if you haven't had the opportunity to send us your questions a bit later on, we're going to give you the opportunity to do so. Meantime, welcome everybody. Happy to have Thank you with you. us. Thank you. Well, one of the questions we have gotten in from the audience <clears throat> is about uh, marijuana, the recreational use of marijuana. And last time I checked, we had about seven states at least that have legalized marijuana for recreation purposes, as well as the District of Columbia, our nation's capital. And other nations, of, uh, other, nations other uh, states that is, have also got proposals in to legalize it in their states. A lot of them are looking at the tax revenue, and it's there. There's, there's a lot of money coming in by way of tax revenues. Um, but I wanted to ask you, the, 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 the underlying question here is, okay, it's legal now in certain states. Doesn't that mean it's okay? After all, marijuana is just nature's way of saying hi. So <laughs> is it okay for Christians to use marijuana for recreational purposes? Who wants to jump? I, you all want to jump in. What that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think uh. the first thing to, to state is, is just because the government says something is legal or okay does not mean that it's okay under biblical principles. And it, it can cover every single you, you got an example? category. You got an example? So, well, it, it doesn't matter. Um, God defines everything, whether it be from what is sin and what is not. So, you know, alcohol usage, um, the, the drug usage, marriage, um, any anything of, of those instances. It is God that defines whether something is a sin or not and not us. So I think that's where you need to start off. Now, addressing you know the marijuana usage, and, and I understand these states are looking at the revenue, but they're not also looking at the cost of you know the addictions and the issues that they bring. They never address those things off the bat. Those always come later, right? There is a report that Drug driving incidents have become as um, mm. troublesome yes. as drunk driving. Mm -hmm. Yes, with the with the legalization of marijuana. So that might be one example. So it's the right. same thing that we had to address in Ohio when the casinos came into play. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, you can get all that re revenue, but what about all the things that you're dealing with with the addiction of gambling now, mm -hmm. and all the mm -hmm. ministries or the nonprofits or even the government organizations that are now dealing with these people that are addicted to gambling? So. Um, the same issue is, is there when you're looking at the total cost. Now, if you guys want to jump in and say, hey, what the biblical principle of yes or no. I think recreationally, um, I agree with you. Just because the government says it's okay does not mean it's okay. God created us as human beings who can reason and think. And I think any time that we partake of something that's going to impair our God-given ability to reason and to think, then we need to be very cautious. Um, the book of James says, if we know to do good and don't do it, then to us it is sin. So if you know better than to destroy your body with alcohol or to um, ruin your family's finances with gambling or to participate in some of those things and you choose to do it, then God says to you, it is counted as a sin. Um, so I think we need to be very cautious when we say recreational income is, or recreational use of these things to produce extra income is is legitimate. I mean, at what cost to society are we allowing that? 
Anybody else? I think there's a practical concern as well, um, even if we get past some of the theological concerns, mm -hmm. which is to say, is this something that in my life, as I'm making a personal choice, helps me to live in a way that glorifies God. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I was 18, I went out and I, I got my ears pierced and I haven't worn my piercings probably in a decade. And it's not because they're sinful, but it's because I know to live the life that God wants me to do, there are people that would not listen to me if, if I have earrings in, whether or not that's right. And there are I others think, who would. Right. Because they've got them too. And, right. if that was, and if that was my situation and where I was called uh -huh. to be, that'd be a very different discussion. Uh -huh. But I think that's something that, that Paul wrestles with is, um, you know, there's that line of to say, maybe this, we could make a way that justifies us, we could make that argument, but does this really help me glorify God with my life? And I, I think that's a tough argument to make with recreational drug use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's the key. You just differentiate between recreational drug use and medical drug use. And I think the scientists, the medical industry is, is realizing that, uh, that he, uh, what the marijuana or the, um, I'm trying to think of the technical name for it, but it's very helpful for medical Cannabis? conditions. Yeah. Cannabis, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's helpful uh, medically, but then, yeah, recreationally, I, I would say no. And I, and I say that, I think, based on biblical principles, but also as a teenager uh, actually using, smoking my, my share of, of weed, uh, it that combined with a teenager's uh, chemistry uh, was mm -hmm, what really mm -hmm. brought me low and brought me to uh, do things I wouldn't do and to really uh, respond emotionally and and mentally. It changed your it, character. It really had it? it changed me quite a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean depression, all these things. So um, yeah, we need to be really really careful as we proceed with this. Not to mention that marijuana has over 400 chemicals in it. The one we all know about is THC, uh, but there are other chemicals that we still don't know the long range effects uh, on, particularly when you're starting out as a youth. Yeah. And to rush in to legalize this stuff, grab all the tax revenue, not knowing the full ramifications of it, that, that can be dangerous. That seems to be the history the, uh, uh, or the how we approach things today in general. I mean, you look uh, across with, with any really pharmaceutical, they're quick to, you know, pass it right away and to, you know, push it down your throat before looking at the long-term, you know, effects of it. Um, what I find is interesting is, is two things. You know, um, first, you know, all these states have pushed tobacco cigarettes mm -hmm. out because of the long-term effects. Yeah. But now but they're bringing in the vapor. Yeah, they, they, they brought the vapor, which is now they're pushing to say, hey, this is even worse. I've heard that. But now they want to actually legalize smoking marijuana, which, again, mm -hmm. is supposed to be worse yeah. mm -hmm. on you. But yet you're looking, they're looking at the dollar amount and not necessarily the health of their people. So, um, but biblically, I always um, look at these things with as, as closely as we can. And we know that scripture says that drunkenness, so alcohol usage, getting drunk is a sin. So it is not okay to get drunk. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have a, a drink, and I'm not saying that, even though I don't, and I, for, for the same reasons that you do. Um, I've never been drunk or anything like that. But um, so getting drunk and losing your impairedness is a sin. So just like you were saying, getting high does the same effect. And so if God says, hey, to lose all control is a sin, you need to be in control of yourself. Because if you're not in control of yourself, then who is? That mm -hmm. is not okay. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at you know, usage of, of drugs and, and those kind of things, that's how I equate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let, I think we've exhausted that. Let's go to another topic here. Is it okay for a Christian to serve in the military is it sin for a Christian soldier to kill? Interesting question. Is it okay for a Christian to serve in the military? And to that extent, is it okay for a Christian soldier to kill? Well, Bill, I was in the Marine Corps from 97 to 01, and uh, not to sensationalize this, but I, I was a trained killer. Uh, and at one time in my life, and, and being a believer, I was very quick to say, yeah, kill them and let God sort them out. Whoa, uh, but man. now, <laughs> never heard that and, and you know, it, it, it's somewhat easy to justify. You go back to the Old Testament, you know, and people are getting knocked off wholesale. Yeah. Uh, but then you come to the New Testament and, and Christ seems to make a different case. He talks about loving your enemies. Uh, then you have the example of the disciples and the apostles 
that never did they take up arms. And when they did, they got corrected. I'm thinking of Peter. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what I'm saying here, uh, I, I think we need to be very careful in just saying, yeah, we can go and kill anyone we want. And, it, it, you know, in the military even. Uh, I, I think we, we just need to be very cautious and think about it and, and not rush into it. We, we, we have imminent threats here today. Uh, you know, Russia is posing a threat to us. Um, Iran is posing a threat. What about in the case where there is a direct threat on your life? Uh, is it okay, uh, be, be, be it military soldier or even as a civilian, when somebody's coming at you to take your life, that you instead take their life? Is God going to hold that against you? Yeah. And, and, and does, it, does, it not, does not a military officer have some sanction from the word of God? We are to look to the leaders of our country and are they not sanctioned to provide protection for our lives? We, we have to, if we as Christians don't obey the police, God holds that against us. We, and we are to pray for those. Yeah, you know, and, and Bill, I start out the way that I did because uh, I've wrestled with this. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I think that when we're talking about taking a life, uh, we have to see that the apostles, they, it says that they endured joyfully the suffering of their goods, of, mm -hmm. of their very livelihood. So, uh, you know, do we, do we just give place to evil? Is that what the scripture is telling us? Or do we go with the government and, and let them tell us what to do? It's, 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 a, it's a weighty question. And all I'm mm -hmm. saying is this, I don't have the answers, but I do know this, that, that there are our brothers and sisters in Christ that are pacifistic. And, and I think sometimes we just kind of brush them off and say, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. But I think they have, they have uh, given us another side of this issue that maybe we need to listen to again. Because you take all of our, our wonderful veterans, mm -hmm. uh, combat vets, mm -hmm. that have taken lives. And, and I think if you were to ask them, is it as cut and dry as just shooting your enemy and it's all over? No, because th there, is, there is after effects what, of like, taking like life. What? Well, PTSD, mm -hmm. uh, they're living with the guilt. Yeah, they're living with the guilt of having taken another life. And, and though we feel justified because this is our government's cause, we, we just need to approach this, I think, with a little more uh, thought and, 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 and really sincerity. And uh, I, I think when we do that, maybe we won't be as quick to, to run off to war. At the same time, it's a good call, you know, a good call to the church to, you know, we don't need to um, condone anybody or anything, but we need to support them and, and to, to love on them. Um, you know, I had served in the, the army um, and this was a question because I was actually studying to become, uh, be a minister at that time and it would be a lot of questions that I had to raise right when I was going through basic training with those in my platoon. Um, I actually became a mortarman because a mortar goes five miles away and I don't have to see the destruction of what that mortar does firsthand. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, you know, there's all these questions and things that go through our soldiers, you know, minds um, and the church doesn't always help them and they just kind of say, well, you're, you're a murderer in, in, in some instances where the other one's like, oh, well, you're, you're okay, you're okay. And, and they don't look at the, the help that can, can get. Um, in the case of, of defense, I firmly believe that, um, that it is okay to serve in the military, to defend the right of, of your people. Um, and and same, same concept is in, in a home invasion. If somebody comes in and breaks into my home, the last thing I'm going to be thinking about is, 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 is this okay to defend my family? Um, however that defense looks like. And the same thing is true with our country. Now we do need to have those thought provoking questions going through our heads of, is this a legitimate reason? Is this a legitimate cause? Yeah, absolutely. Let me just, so the first part of this question is, is it okay for Christians to serve in the military? I'd say absolutely, absolutely. yes. There are plenty of positions, you know, of course, moms are usually like, oh, no, my boy's going to go yeah. away to war. No, no, no. There, there are plenty of positions. Or my that, girl. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are plenty of, of jobs in the military that don't require you to be in the line of fire. But I think we need to check our hearts. Am I going into any military service and saying, man, I want to kill? I don't believe any Christian should have a heart to say, I just can't wait to put 
around through my enemy. But it's funny right. that both you and I had served in infantry yes. capacities. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we didn't choose a medic that just basically, or a cook or even a chaplain. Like, we were trained to be on the front lines and to ask these questions. And I'm not sure about you, but God used me in the, I mean, I was able to minister to my fellow soldiers. <clears throat> So there are even people that are called to be in the military, to be on the front lines, carrying that rifle so that God can speak into the lives of those next to them in the foxholes. Okay. I firmly believe that. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, I'd like to address a totally different issue. Well, it may be a little related. Uh, this, country, this country is so divided, in case you didn't know that. We are <laughs> so divided. It seems like an opportunity for Christians to step in with healing and, and, and try to bring folks together in this country. How do we go about that? And we'll deal with that issue and more right after this. So stay with us. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. We are back, and you know, there is such divisiveness in what I call these yet-to-be United States. Uh, it seems like an opportunity for the church to move in with healing. Um, the divisiveness spreads along political lines, along racial lines, social lines, um, economic lines. I mean, you name it, we've got the divisiveness in this country. And uh, how can a house stand when when it's divided like this, it cannot, it cannot stand. And as great as this country in, is, it can be undermined by the divisiveness. How do we as Christians move in to bring unity? Well, I think one thing we don't do is approach everything with the idea of you can agree with me or you can be wrong. Mm -hmm. I That's think good. we need to leave room for conversation and interaction. I think um, another thing that we should not be doing is airing all of our opinions on Facebook or <laughs> on the electronic media sites. So that's uh -huh. never solved an argument. It's never uh, provided a solution to a problem. It just stirs up discord. Venting. And, I think, it, and yeah. I think it misrepresents who Jesus is and who Jesus calls us to be. So I think what we do need to do is make every effort, if at all possible with us, to live at peace with all people. Mm -hmm. The problem comes when it seems like the church is doing that and society is not doing that. That 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 is where there's there's definitely there's definitely some rub. Another another set, another set of rules. There. Another set of rules that they're playing by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Jesus prayed in John 17 that great high priestly prayer, where he said that Father, they may be one even as you and I are one, yeah. and they'll know that they're Christians by our love, as the yeah. song goes, right? So. But that prayer has not been answered. It, yet. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it has. But here's what I want to say about that is. I think it begins with the leaders, right? And and we see the leaders in Top Washington. Uh, I mean, if we're talking politically now, the leaders in Washington, uh, they're they're so divided, and then they're affecting the American people, and um, and then that goes to the leadership in the church as well. If if we as the leaders aren't united, then our people aren't going to be united. Mm -hmm. And and we see that when Jesus was ministering on earth, he he was directing a lot of his. Uh, speaking to the leadership because mm -hmm. they had so divided the people with a whole lot of things. So I think it, it boils down to this, that individually we as believers have to be forgiving, we have to be understanding, and we have to do as Paul said, to become all things to all men. I have to attempt to see things from your perspective mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and give you grace to be who you are. And at the end of the day, listen, we can agree to disagree, but let's, let's agree on the fundamentals. And, and there are some individuals that, that can't even agree on that, which is sad. Mm -hmm. But I think those of us that, that are attempting to strive for the kingdom, to strive in unity, uh, we really have to come down on that truth that, that we need to sometimes agree to disagree, but love one another because we love Jesus. Nobody else want to chime in? <laughs> a, a big thing we need to do is, as a church and as Christians is demonstrate a different way. And that's something, unfortunately, we don't do a lot. I mean, you've not seen a church uh, fight until you've seen a church fight. <laughs> and unfortunately, especially in this world that's so divided with politics, 
Um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of us as Christians are dividing ourselves by uh, our political parties rather than being kingdom people and rather than seeing those we disagree with as other beloved children of God. And so, uh, you know, the biggest thing I think we need to do is to start to demonstrate that, which we haven't really seen in mm -hmm. our country and in our churches and uh, amongst Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as much as we talk about being a country that's still more secular, still the surveys say about 70% of people uh, in the U.S., so over 70%, consider themselves Christian. If we banded together, Mm -hmm. to be loving to each other, that would <laughs> force such a radical change in our yeah. society, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yet we don't. And I think you're right. I think that our life should be calling out questions. And if it's not, then I think you need to relook at your life. Because I think about what Peter wrote in First Peter, that, that God has called us to be a chosen people, a peculiar, a peculiar, peculiar people, people mm -hmm. living differently. So we need to make sure, like you said, that our life within the church matches our life outside of the church so people can see the hope, not the fighting or the warring or the disagreements. They can see the hope that lives within us. And I think, I, oh, go ahead. Carry on, please. Well, I think, that, I think that's important because we can sit here and say, here is why the country's divided over all these things. But the reality is, is, you know, Lima, Ohio, Allen County, whatever, how are we going to affect that? Sure, we can vote, we can do all that stuff, but it's still going to be very minuscule. The thing that starts is what, what you, both of you were saying is it starts with us and, and here's what we are. Even as pastors, you know, we can, we can choose to lead the biblical way to empower our people to do what's right for them, not what's necessarily right for us. What God wants versus what we want and to be that example for them. And then hopefully that they are being that example. We are educating them from a biblical standpoint of this is how you conduct yourself. Um, in my staff meeting this week, we got into the conversation of the election and we need to understand as, as Christians, just because I voted, whether it be Republican or Democrat, I am not electing a pastor. I'm an electing uh, so, uh, social cultural leader, the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with my spiritual life. And if you don't think that God can use anybody, then you need to look at, go back to the Old Testament, look at King Darius, where God used King Darius to rebuild not only Jerusalem, but his temple, a heathen king, mm -hmm. and God used. So just because I vote one way or another does not mean that I am any less of a Christian. And that will be help with that one political fight. And that hopefully we can get together election happened, it happened, now we come back and we support each other again. Because that's what we do as a body of Christ. We stand together, we support each other. The most important thing is Jesus. Jesus, that's it, Jesus. I think what all of you have referenced is the importance of biblical instruction, sound biblical instruction within our churches. Yes. I think if we look at America as a society, we are basically a biblically illiterate society. Yes. People, people have Bibles. They have several Bibles sometimes laying around their homes, but they do not take the time to open them. Or if they do need a word from God, they open their Bible and use their finger and say, oh, this is a scripture for me today. And then take whatever that says out of the context that it was delivered in, and then they don't have the accurate meaning of it. So I think if we're gonna talk about absolute truth and motivating our people, motivating those around us, that we have got to make sure that we as leaders are providing biblically literate instruction based on the context of God's word. Let, let me ask you this. I look back at the era of Billy Graham, mm -hmm. and this is a man that regardless of who was in the White House, would go in with one agenda, Jesus Christ. Yes. He did not portray himself as Democrat or Republican. He went after the soul that was in that Oval Office. Yes. You see? Yeah. Now, I think that's gone. I think, and I, I touched on this last week on the program, that we tend to fall down along political lines. You know, God did not call us to take sides. He called us to take over with our love, you know? So, how are we going to do this? Why are we not reaching out to the mayor, to the county commissioner, township trustee locally, our state representatives, and then all the way up Pennsylvania Avenue to the White House. Why are we not trying to have an impact on those folks as well without necessarily saying, I'm of your political persuasion, so I'm with you. Without an agenda. Yeah, yeah you saw well, some political agenda. Billy Graham didn't do that. Christianity does not exist to take over the world. It does not exist to be the cultural, social aspect set up. God deals with people. Yeah not institutions. Right. 
But so what, but, the but, way you, you the way you address it, if, if you want God to take over the culture, mm -hmm. you go after the people. Yeah. Because the people will go after the culture. We don't try and make laws. We don't try and make no, mandates. No, but, we don't try and do this. But, but if they it, do, and my point is, just pardon me, interrupt, my point is, since they do make the laws, they have some sort of a, um, a social base or some social sure. values mm -hmm. that they're using to, to, to com come up with their ideas and, and their values. And I'm basing this law that I'm proposing on this set of values and the like. But if they are educated, if their lives are touched by Christ, when Billy Graham went into the White House, he went in to try to touch that yes. individual in the, in the Oval yes. Office with the values of Christ. That's what I'm saying. You and, and I mean taking over in that regard. Yeah, I yes, mean, yeah, I understand. Um, but in the future, to do that now, we can definitely do that. But you need to hit every single person that's in office right now mm -hmm, and go after mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. If you want to take over the future, then you do exactly what she said. We educate our young people. We save, or not that we save them, but we I'm introduce saying. them to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ saves their soul. Mm -hmm. And then their morality comes underlined of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then the, the culture will reflect that. Yeah, because yeah. we are winning over the masses. Because that's what Jesus Christ, if you don't think that Jesus is in the, um, uh, the business of numbers, then you need to read through Acts. In meaning, one day, 3,000 people. Oh, okay. that 3, no, people came to Christ in one day. Yes. Do we want to have yeah. the largest churches at this table? Absolutely. Sure, sure. 100%. Do we want to just have a big church just to have a big church? No. That's a hey. whole lot of headache for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we want to save the most people that we can yes, or yes. introduce them to Jesus because we love Jesus so much is that we want as many people to know who Jesus is. And I want this to be a Christian nation, but I do not want it to be a Christian nation just simply in name. I want it to be a Christian nation because we are Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's fulfilling the Great Commission. That's the yes. ultimate yes. mandate that's it. That's it. is we proclaim the gospel, but that's not where we stop. We then make disciples. Mm -hmm. Make disciples is what requires that long-term commitment to biblical instruction and example. That, and that is exactly what I mean by taking over. And, and sometimes when we divide ourselves along political lines and bring that into the pulpit, it, it becomes a, a, a divisive issue. It divides us yes. rather than unites us. Um, because we have to learn to love one another regardless of what our political persuasions yes. are. If, if you and I have different political persuasions, it doesn't matter. You're my blood-washed brother in Christ. You're my blood-washed sister yeah. in Christ. What your opinions are and my opinions are may be different, but we have to unite. We have to love each other. Mm -hmm. We don't always like each other. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think of Paul and Barnabas in the book of yeah. Acts. They, they had know. enough wisdom to know that yeah. them working together was going to not be a good representation of the gospel of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a, there was a, a lady Quick. that I was working with um, a while ago, and we just, I mean, we both loved Jesus, but we just went like, our personalities did not mesh, and jokingly we would say, we'll probably be on different levels in heaven. You know, you'll be here, I'll be here, and we'll just, you know, we'll be all fine for eternity. And but we have to live under the premise of loving, loving one another. And upon that note, we're going to have to end it. The clock has run out. We want to thank you for all the contributions you've made to the program this, uh, this day and last week as well. And thank you for joining us. We're happy to have you with us. Be sure you tune in again next week for another fine panel of ministers as we deal with life questions. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. God bless you. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>